Hello everyone, today we're looking at the topic of inclined planes in mechanics and we're going to look at a scenario which I've got in front of us where you've got a particle on an inclined plane and we're going to see what's going to happen in this scenario. Now if you were to put an object like this on a smooth surface it would very simply just fall down the slope and the reason for this is because the particle has weight associated to it. Whenever you have a particle acting on any surface, there is weight acting vertically downwards, which we can write as mg, the mass times the gravitational force. Now, there is also a reaction force whenever you're in contact with the surface, and that reaction force always acts perpendicularly to the surface like this. Whenever we deal with horizontal plane like this you might have your action force coming up like this r and mg coming down like this in a balanced manner now this is different because the reaction force and the weights are not acting in the same direction or not acting in the same perpendicular direction in this case now what's different about an inclined plane compared to a normal surface is that the weight is causing this particle to move in this direction. We're not dealing with forces in an up and down direction. We need to look at part forces acting in this direction instead. And any time you deal with any force question, it's actually important to look at the direction that is parallel and perpendicular to the direction of motion and this is critical for any form of question like this now when i say parallel and perpendicular to the direction of motion the direction of motion in this case is down this slope so we need to make sure our forces are acting in directions that are parallel to that and perpendicular now if we look at r r is already perpendicular to the surface so that force is actually already okay but this mg force this weight here is not perpendicular so we actually need to split it and resolve it into its parallel and perpendicular component. So as we said, we need to resolve our forces into parallel and perpendicular forces, with, or resolve the forces into parallel and perpendicular directions to the direction of motion. So I'm gonna bring you across to this scenario over here. We have a five kilogram block on a 30 degree incline. Now, whenever I do a question like this, the first thing I do is I, I put all my forces on. We have 5G coming downwards over here, and we have our value of R coming like this. Now, the first thing I always do whenever I'm doing a question like this is I, what I say, drop a perpendicular from the base of the five kilogram weight, i.e. I drop a line like this. And what happens is that will become parallel to the direction of motion further up. So here I've actually created a right angle triangle. Now the force itself has to be the hypotenuse. Now for me to resolve this, I need to have a angle inside that triangle. Now, Eventually, we'll all be very, very familiar with doing this very quickly. But if we look over here, this angle over here is 30 degrees, and I've created a right angle triangle over here. That means if this is 30 and this is 90, the angle up here must be 60. And if that angle there is 60 and I have a right angle over here, this angle over here becomes 30 degrees. And that is always the case for an inclined plane. Whenever you have a force down here or an angle down here, it is the same as the angle inside here for the right angled triangle. So we now need to resolve this force into its horizontal or into its parallel and perpendicular components. Now, because this is a right angle triangle, we can use basic trigonometry or Sokotoa to do this. So this is our adjacent and this is our hypotenuse. So the hypotenuse being 5G, the adjacent is going to be, so if you think about this, cos 30 is adjacent 
over hypotenuse, the adjacent is simply h times by cos 30. h cos 30 is simply 5g cos 30. Now, in the same way, this is our opposite, and our opposite would be referring to sine 30. So I'll make this sine 30 is the opposite over the hypotenuse. So the opposite over here is h sine 30. And actually, this is always the case. Whenever you have a right angle triangle like this and you're resolving forces perpendicular or parallel, that this over here force opposite the angle is the hypotenuse sine and the one next to it, the adjacent, is the hypotenuse cos. And this is always the case when you're resolving forces like this. Now, the other important thing to note is the direction in which these forces are going. When you look at the force of the weight, it's acting vertically downwards. Now, that means if I'm following these forces, forces are vectors, which means they follow the same direction. If I start here, this force has to act like this, and then it needs to come down this way. It needs to follow that arrow from tip to tail. It's gone tip to tail, and then tip to tail again over here. What we've done here is resolved our forces into the parallel and perpendicular components. Now, only one of these causes this block to move down the slope. And that is the force over here, the 5g sine 30. It's this component of the weight that makes this move down the slope. The other force, the 5g cos 30, must be equal to the value of the reaction force because this particle is not going to come off the surface. It's not going to sink into the surface. It's simply going to move this way, meaning these forces must be balanced. So we can say two things in this question. We can say that R is equal to 5g cos 30 and that is from looking at the perpendicular forces now i use that symbol there which is a 90 degree angle to show that r is equal to 5g cos 30 and then if we look at the forces going down the slope well this must be accelerating down the slope because there is only one force acting down the slope so if we do f equals ma parallel and down the slope we can say the positive force here is 5g sine 30, and that is equal to the mass, which is 5 times by the acceleration, giving us 5g sine 30 divided by 5. Those 5s will cancel out, leaving with g sine 30, and that means the acceleration is equal to 4.9 meters per second squared. Now, obviously, that would change if the angle changed. So we need to obviously think about that when we're doing questions like this. But we've, all we've done here is resolved our forces into our two components of parallel and perpendicular. And then we've done F equals MA in the direction of the motion. Now, I'm going to build this up into one other example, which is slightly more challenging. But it's going to follow the same principle. Now, I've got this in the other direction. And we've got a variety of forces over here. Now, any time you do a question which we said which involves resolving forces on an inclined plane, you need to make sure you're looking at splitting these forces into parallel and perpendicular components. There are two forces on here that do not need to be resolved because they are already in the correct directions. Now, I'm going to do my parallel forces in pink and my perpendicular forces in green. The 10 newtons here is already parallel to the surface. That force does not need to be resolved. The value of R is perpendicular to the surface. That force does not need to be resolved. The 30 newtons and the 4G, however, are not acting parallel or perpendicular to the surface, so those need to be resolved. What I can do for the 30 newtons is draw an arrow to the right over here. That's my parallel force. And I can then come up and perpendicular to the right hand side like this to create our right angle triangle and have our parallel and perpendicular forces in play. Now I can also resolve the forces on my 4G. Now we said we drop a perpendicular, so I drop a perpendicular from here 
until it's in line with this. It should be the same as that. So that goes there. And I provide a parallel force in this direction. Now we said we've got an angle of 20 degrees. Where must that angle go? Well, if you think about this, this first right angle makes this 20 and this 70. Maybe the angle in here is our 20 degrees. So we've got there the angles in. We now need to, just need to make sure we've got our forces on the diagram. Now, I always advise drawing a big diagram so we can label it effectively. Over here, this is my 30, this is my adjacent, that becomes 30 cos 60, because it's the adjacent. We then have 30 sine 60 acting parallel to the slope, 30 sine 60, so acting perpendicular to the slope. Over here, we've got 4G, now this is opposite, so that is 4G Sine 20, and I've just realized I've done these in the wrong color, so I'm quickly going to shift that over. This should be in pink because we did say pink forces would be parallel, so that should be 4G sine 20. And the other one, the perpendicular force, should have been in green, which would have been 4G cos 20 acting perpendicular to the surface over here. 4G cos. 20. So what we've got over here, let's make it a little bit clearer, 4G cos 20 and 4G sine 20. And we can see quite clearly here which directions these forces are acting in. Now, if we're thinking about the acceleration of this situation over here, we need to look at the forces acting parallel to the slope and down the slope. So this is going to accelerate in a downward direction over here. So we're going to do, to find the acceleration, F equals MA parallel to the slope and down the slope because it is accelerating in this direction. Now if we look at the forces acting parallel, that's 4G sine 20, 30 cos 60 and 10 newtons. The forces acting in this direction down the slope are 4G sine 20 plus 30 cos 60, the 10 newtons is actually the other direction, that's minus 10 is equal to 4a, because this is mg. If we work that out, 4g sine 20 plus 30 cos 20 minus 10 divided by 4, that is equal to 4.60 meters per second. Squared. So accelerating down is at 4.60 meters per second squared. So we found out the acceleration of this system. We can also work at the value of r in this case because we're looking at the perpendicular forces. We know this is only going to act, move down the slope, and not come off the slope. So the forces perpendicularly must be balanced. So if we look at the forces acting perpendicularly, put this in brackets perpendicular. We look at the forces acting in that direction equal to the forces coming downwards in this direction. The forces up in that direction are the R and the 30 sine 60. If we look at the arrows, that's going up, that's going up. This is coming back down. So R plus 30 sine 60 is equal to 4G cos 20. If we subtract this from this, we end up with a value of 4 times 9.8 cos 20 minus 30 sine 60 is equal to 10.9 newtons. R is equal to 10.9 newtons. So the process here was the same throughout. The first thing you have to do is label your diagram, make sure it's large enough so you can resolve your forces effectively parallel and perpendicularly to the direction of motion. From there, you can then use F equals MA, parallel to the direction of motion, or you can look at the forces perpendicular to the surface and balance them out. I hope that's made sense. If it hasn't, please let me know or comment below.